Now we will be installing an FTP server on a um, Debian Linux operating system. I will be using a virtual machine for this uh, installation. It is a uh, Debian uh, 10 Buster. Uh, it will be running a bridged adapter, so it should uh, act and feel exactly like a physical machine. So here it is. I'll just log on to this uh, machine and uh, make sure the IP settings are correct. Now, um, this machine has uh, 192.168.8.133 and of course that has to exist in the same subnet as my physical machine, which it uh, does. So we can just test that that works. And uh, it does. So uh, now I have uh, a connection, an IP connection between uh, my physical Mac workstation and the virtual uh, Debian system. So I can now just uh, log off and minimize this machine because I will be using SSH uh, to connect to it for the installation which is of course a, a lot easier. Now if you're doing this on a system w with a graphical interface then uh, it's just the same, just open a terminal and, and uh, do the same. So uh, like I said, S uh, SSH And there. Uh, now we're uh, logged on and we're on the Debian machine. And uh, the first thing you should do, of course, is to uh, update and upgrade uh, your uh, apt packet manager. Which is, uh, in my case, fine. And uh, the installation is very simple. I will uh, not be doing that on this machine because it already has the, the server installed, but uh, you should do it if you don't have it. Uh, so let's just uh, check. Yeah, it is loaded and uh, running on that uh, particular machine. Now the first thing you really should be doing if you're very new to this is uh, make a backup of the original config file. For example, and uh, yeah, let's just get uh, right into editing the config file. You can of course use any uh, text editor you, uh, you'd like. I prefer the uh, nano. And uh, for uh, the purposes of this video, I have collected all the settings in, in one place. If you're doing this, then uh, a lot of these settings are already in the config file. They're just uh, commented out. So to uh, make something uh, valid, for example, the write enabled, which is something you definitely want, just remove the hashtag, the pound sign, uh, to enable it. But like I said, just for the purposes of this video, I have uh, put everything at the bottom so we can just look at everything at once. You, of course, can also do the same. Okay, so the first thing we want uh, in our server is to be able to write to it. Uh, and then we want to prohibit uh, the users from uh, gaining access to any other uh, uh, gaining access to any other uh, locations outside of the uh, di the root directory for the FTP, so we're we're setting that, and then 
we uh, insert a token to uh, make sure that uh, the uh, every user gets to the correct uh, home directory that's why we add the uh, sub token user and we insert the root directory which of course the the user token will then be replaced by the actual username and then we defined uh, the uh, minimum and maximum uh, or the port range for passive FTP which we will I will not be uh, talking about now but of course you can just google that and we'll also be using user lists this is to uh, give or deny access to the uh, FTP server well, as I said earlier this is a very basic configuration we're not doing any uh, encryption uh, and we're not doing any port forwarding but you will of course need to port forward your passive port range and the FTP ports 20 and 21 in your router and you uh, should be careful forward it to the right IP address of the machine that's running your FTP server but we will not be uh, doing that right now now we will be adding a new user uh, just to show how it's done and uh, just for the purposes of explanation I will uh, change uh, my directory to show you the users I have I have four users already now you of course could uh, give or grant FTP access to any of those users but I will uh, I will make a new one just fill in the details as you see fit and as you can see now the new user has its own home folder but you will also need a root folder uh, for the FTP uh, I'm using full path uh, here just to avoid confusion now we have to play around with ownership and permissions which is very important in uh, in Linux and you, you have to get this uh, right so now we're, we're uh, prohibiting any uh, writing to the root folder of the of the FTP and uh, now we will make a folder which the right the user can upload uh, files to and we also have to set the correct uh, permissions for that uh, folder okay so let's just uh, see how that worked out it's easier if we just go to the FTP folder so uh, as you can see here now uh, the root uh, folder the FTP folder here uh, with uh, just the one uh, the one punctuation mark is uh, not you're not able to do anything with that folder because it does not belong to the user but the files uh, folder does and you uh, you do have uh, right access to that uh, folder the next thing we need to do is uh, uh, edit uh, or create the uh, file we mentioned a little bit earlier the user list uh, file now 
Uh, it's very important that uh, this file is the exact uh, name that you defined earlier in the configuration file. Now we add the user to that file. And now we're ready to restart the server so it can uh, load the new configuration. Okay. Now let's uh, let's see if it works. I will be using uh, FileZilla uh, application, and uh, we're going to now connect to the FTP uh, server with the user we just created. So uh, the IP address of the server, which is here, and the username and the password. Now leaving that port space here means that the uh, file filler just uses port 21, which is the default port. Now I have connected to this server before. Uh, if you have not, you will probably get uh, a warning that it does not support uh, TLS. Uh, so it's unencrypted, but uh, in this scenario, you should just allow that. Uh, and now we can test it. We're now in the root directory uh, and the folder which we just made, the files folder is here. They're both empty, of course. So let's uh, check out the permissions and how they, wor how they work. Now, if I try to upload a file to the, the root directory, that is uh, this uh, directory here, which I can basically not write to, I should get uh, an error which I do, I'm not allowed to do that, which is in this case correct. Now, if I go into the files subfolder, which I uh, did give myself the right permission to, I am allowed to do it. I can just now check here. You can see the file I just uploaded is now here. Let's just check if we are allowed to delete it. It seems fine. Check again here now, and now it's gone. So that's it. It's a pretty basic configuration. Uh, if you plan on uh, leaving this server uh, up or doing some real-time uh, work with it, you definitely need to enable the encryption. And of course, once again, you need to do the port forwarding if you want this to work uh, through uh, a firewall. Okay, that's it.